to honor those who have served, Navy Band Great Lakes will conclude today's concert with a performance on the Armed Forces Medley. As your service song is played, please stand to recognize your service or your family's service to our country.
The parade of graduates is underway and will arrive at Midway Ceremonial Hall in just a few moments. Please make sure that all personal items are clear of the aisles and the drill deck. Guests in the balcony are reminded that standing along the rail is prohibited for the remainder of the ceremony. We know that your sailors will have many wonderful and amazing stories for you about their boot camp experience. However, at this time, we offer some video evidence that reveals our side of the story. the quarter deck of the United States Navy. Good order and discipline will be maintained 24-7. Proper military posture will be maintained 24-7. Every enlisted sailor begins their naval career here, and our mission is fairly simple. It's to transform civilians into smartly disciplined, physically fit sailors ready for follow-on training and service to the fleet, and while doing so, to instill in them the highest values of honor, courage, and commitment. You are no longer a civilian. Whatever you were before, is now over. You are about to begin a journey that's gonna make you a part of the greatest naval force the world has ever known. This training will not be easy. It wasn't meant to be. Our training environment is controlled chaos. And while it may not seem like that to the recruits, each and every event has meaning and purpose. You're gonna sound off at the top of your lungs. Do you understand? Yes, I do, sir! We are designed to develop skill sets that sailors can carry throughout their entire career. We push hard on physical fitness. You better get the work. Watch standing. Stop looking, man. Look! Try it. Read it and look. And creating a warrior mindset. Now, with the mental scan, you're going to be focused on your mind. A true body, mind, and soul approach. When I say gas, 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 you'll have 15, one, five seconds. Put on your face, tighten your straps, check floor seal, and put your hands in your pockets. All of our recruits receive training that will help them the second they get to the fleet. Firefighting, damage control, weapons and seamanship. Our recruits get hands-on training and application with them all. together as a team, execute the mission, and the next time I see you, you'll be sailors. Who y'all neighbors? Everything they learn is tested in a battle stations. Identify yourself. Chief, Division 001, man in ready for battle station, Chief. Very well. Do not relax anything that is on you. That is a 24-hour event where the recruit ceases to exist and a sailor is forged.
Navy boot camp really is a machine with a swarm of moving parts, all working towards the same goal, making a sailor. The Navy has resources for your family to get the most up-to-date information and even contact you while out to sea. The Navy Ombudsman is one of those resources. Ombudsmen are volunteers appointed by the commanding officer to serve as an information link between command leadership and Navy families. They're trained to disseminate information, Department of Navy information, command climate issues, and good deals around the community such as events, tickets, entertainment, etc. They also provide resources and referral and are instrumental in providing assistance before requiring immediate command attention. To find your command ombudsman, go to ombudsmanregistry.org. Welcome to Fleet and Family Support Programs. We take care of sailors and their family members to reduce the impact of stressors in their lives. Our programs and services focus on prevention, support, and resiliency. Counseling, advocacy, and prevention programs provide individual, group, and family counseling, victim intervention, and related prevention education and awareness programs, such as clinical counseling. Non-medical short-term counseling is available at no cost to active duty sailors and their family members. This encompasses a broad scope of educational, preventative, and therapeutic services that promote improved quality of life and increased resilience. New Parent Support. The New Parent Support Program provides military families who are expecting or have young children with comprehensive parenting and early child development education. Sexual Assault Prevention and Response, or SAPR, supports commanding officers in creating a command climate of prevention that promotes installation-wide sexual assault awareness efforts and the management of sexual assault cases, including victim advocacy and support services. Other programs and services are included in the Work and Family Life programs, which directly support mission readiness by preparing service members and their families for the military lifestyle's physical, emotional, and interpersonal demands through programs such as Life Skills Education. Life skills are all about self-discovery and exploring new ways to think, interact, and solve problems. These workshops focus on communication skills, parenting strategies, conflict management, stress and anger management, and suicide prevention. Personal Financial Management, PFM, provides individual personal financial counseling and financial education seminars to stimulate a change in behavior to promote responsibility and accountability, leading to financial independence, sound money management, debt avoidance, and long-term financial stability. The Exceptional Family Member Program, EFMP, supports military families with special needs, including special medical, dental, mental health, developmental, or educational requirements. EFMP operates through three interrelated components, identification and enrollment, assignment coordination, and family support. Fleet and Family Support Programs also provide a deployable workforce that supports sailors who are underway with embedded deployed resiliency counselors and prevention coordinators. Additionally, we provide onboard deployment trainings via our departure and separation and return and reunion programs, which are conducted at the beginning and end of deployments. These programs and many more are provided in person, online, by telephone, and on the My Navy Family mobile app, which provides a one-stop shop for obtaining information on services and resources. Remember, as you journey through your Navy career, Fleet and Family Support Programs is with you every step of the way. A strong America is a force for good in the world, and the strength of our military is paramount to that mission. Wherever they go, 
The USO is there to keep our service members connected to everything that gives meaning to their service, family, home, and country. The USO is trusted to support our service members on all seven continents. With more than 200 locations, Home for Our Troops is as close as the nearest USO center or program. The USO provides critical programming, connecting with service members and their families millions of times each year. From the moment they swear an oath, new recruits are welcomed by the USO's family of staff and volunteers. I'm here to witness my son swearing in. It's nice to have basically a liaison to help people so they aren't as nervous of what their children are going to go through. Separation and constant movement are an ever-present challenge for service members and their loved ones. The USO keeps military families strong, providing connection home and events for families and couples. From the little Christmas events for the kids, or like we had a date night, the USO has given us time, not only together, time with our children, and things to do. When troops are deployed, the USO provides a home away from home to help bridge the distance. On the front lines, a care package, a phone call home, comfort food, a familiar song, or a moment to relax can mean everything. When their military service to the nation is complete, the USO connects transitioning veterans with resources in their new communities and helps them plan for their next chapter. We spend most of our time servicing the country that when it's time to get out, we're usually behind the curve a little. The USO has come in to kind of get us a leg up on that transition so we can make the best move into a second career. We are the USO, the force behind the forces. Go to USO.org to learn more. Good morning, and welcome to Recruit Training Command at Naval Station Great Lakes, the quarterdeck of the Navy. I am Rear Admiral Craig Mattingly, Commander of Naval Service Training Command. I want to personally welcome you to our Navy family. What an exciting day. Family, friends, and shipmates, it is an honor to have you with us as we celebrate the graduation of our newest United States Navy sailors. It seems just like yesterday, I was graduating boot camp and it meant the world to me to have my family and friends sitting in the audience just like you. I wanna take a moment to thank you for playing a significant role in the lives of these sailors before you. Your support, your encouragement, and your love help them reach this time-honored tradition. As we look upon these young women and men, we see a transformation that took place over the past several weeks. They endured rigorous physical and mental training, pushing themselves to their limits and beyond. They learned the importance of teamwork, of discipline, and of dedication. They have become a proud part of our tradition of service to our nation. Each of these new sailors will play a critical role in fulfilling our Navy's mission. They will be stationed around the world serving on ships, on submarines, and aircraft, protecting our nation and our allies. Your sailor will make a positive impact on the world. They will be ambassadors of our country, representing the best of what America has to offer. They will be leaders, they will be mentors, and they will be role models for others to follow. And as we celebrate this graduation, let us remember the sacrifices that were made to get us here. Let us honor the commitment and the dedication of these new sailors. And let us look forward to the bright future that lies ahead, knowing that our nation is in great hands. Thank you, thank you for playing a significant role in the lives of these recruits. And I warmly welcome you to our Navy family. Enjoy the ceremony and celebrate your sailor. Thank you.
as the parade of graduates approaches, we salute the nation's territories whose sons and daughters will graduate today. Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maryland, South Carolina, New Hampshire, Virginia, Tennessee, Ohio, Louisiana, Indiana, Mississippi, Illinois, Alabama, Maine, Missouri, Michigan, Florida, Texas, Iowa, Wisconsin, California, Minnesota, Oregon, Kansas, West Virginia,
division. Right. Face. Section leaders. All out. Black outer bars.
division commanders, left or right, face, parade, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm Lieutenant Josh Jones, Recruit Training Command Drill Division Officer. I would like to welcome you to today's task review. Today you will see six divisions comprised of 408 sailors participating in their graduation ceremony and soon to join the most powerful Navy in the world. Please draw your attention to the new position center deck. There is the review commander and staff. The review commander is responsible for conducting today's graduation ceremony. Today's review commander is Senior Recruit Cooper Hearn from the Ames, Iowa. Let's give him a hand, folks. Performing today is the Triple Threat Unit on our sixth week of training. The state flags unit on our seventh week of training, and the staff unit on our ninth week of training. These units are comprised entirely of recruits. During their night arrival, recruits are placed into divisions of 80 personnel and assigned division commanders. Recruit division commanders form the backbone of recruit training and are key individuals in the life of every recruit. Division commanders will serve as counselors, disciplinarians, administrators, and military leaders. Above all, they must show themselves as outstanding examples of military bearing, appearance, attitude, and behavior. Each division also has a recruit chief and officer. This senior recruit supervises the divisional staff positions and leads the division in the absence of their division commanders. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the graduating divisions, their division commanders, and the recruit chief and officers. As I introduce each division, they will raise the competitive flags that they have earned throughout their training. As I introduce each recruit chief and officer, the flag representing their home state will also be raised. Please hold your applause until all introductions have been completed. I will be starting from their right. Division 0 9 3. Commanded by Senior Chief Petty Officer Donnie Hall Resco. Petty Officer Second Class Brian Hall. Petty Officer Second Class Rachel Blue. And the Recruiter Chief Petty Officer, Seaman Ethan Nazarenes from San Antonio, Texas. Division 0 9 4. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Jonathan Valatoy. Petty Officer First Class Aaron Downer. Petty Officer First Class Tony Brown. And the Recruit Chief Petty Officer Seaman Donovan Foley from Vienna, Virginia. Division 095. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Michael Woodbury. Petty Officer First Class Melanie Henderson. Petty Officer First Class Andrew Piazza. And the Recruit Chief Petty Officer Stephen Aubrey Toya from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Division 097. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Kalan Roman. Petty Officer First Class Johnny Downs. Petty Officer Second Class Jemai Bradley. And the Recruit Chief Petty Officer Airman Apprentice Catherine King from Cincinnati, Ohio. Division 098. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Jonathan McGrath. Petty Officer Second Class Anthony Thomas. Petty Officer Second Class Kathy Garcia. And the Recruit Chief Petty Officer Airman Apprentice Kaylee Herzberger from El Rock Hills, California. Division 099. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Mark Pastro. Chief Petty Officer Josh Gouldy. Petty Officer Second Class Ronick Mitra. 
and their Chief Petty Officer, Officer Seaman Dylan, Dylan Tompkinson, Tompkinson from Galloway, New Jersey. On behalf of the Commanding Officer and Staff of Recruit Training Command, we congratulate these Division Commanders and their Recruit Chief Petty Officers on a job well done. This time our tradition is our formal greeting to this morning's review officer. When requested by the announcer, please stand for the right of honors, marching on with the colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. As a reminder, military guests shall remain covered throughout the entire graduation ceremony. And ladies and gentlemen, one final note. As befitting the importance of this occasion, our ceremony is conducted in a formal manner. However, we do encourage you to participate in today's graduation ceremony by letting your applause show these sailors just how proud of them you are. Once again, welcome aboard. Will the guests please rise and stand for the arrival of the official party?
the guests may be seated.
Return the colors! Present our...
Accident Translating Division. Pleasant mission to commence the review. Good morning. Commence the review. Hi, Hi sir.
gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to your Navy quarterback. I'm Captain Ken Froger, Commanding Officer of Recruit Training Command. I'd like to welcome our family and friends attending this recruit graduation today and those watching live from around the world. Joining us today is our review, Officer Rear Admiral Jeff Cher, Commander of Naval Education and Training Command. Our guest of honor, Mr. Robert Kerr, National Commandant, Navy Club, United States of America. And our special guest, Mr. Daniel Seahaver, National Commander of the American Navy. I would also like to acknowledge staff from our fleet support sponsor, Submarine Forces of Land, sponsoring Division 097. Our fleet sponsor program allows recruits to connect with sailors and Navy commands from around the world to gain valuable mentoring and motivation while here in training for training command. I would also like to welcome all our veterans here joining us. Thank you for your dedicated service to our country. For all our veterans, please rise and give you a round of applause. These sailors have successfully completed 10 rigorous weeks of demanding recruit training and earned the right to wear the uniform recognized around the world as a symbol of freedom. I would also like to take a moment to introduce you to their family and friends, to your new Navy family. As you reconnect with your sailors shortly and learn about your new journey together, we invite you to learn more about your Navy resources here at Great Lakes and around the world. Search the internet, Navy Boot Camp, Navy Family. Check out our website for more information about your Navy Family resources. Today's graduate service is better off our Navy forces and will join other American sailors around the world to defend freedom and liberty against those who threaten. I can say with pride, this training group is ready to graduate. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you 408 of the newest and sharpest Navy sailors in the United States Navy. Captain, Airman 
For achieving the highest overall academic score for improved training, Aaron Brian Celestino visits your Alexa from Ann Florida at her Aaron Celestino receives a letter of commendation from the commanding officer. Well Seaman Apprentice, Caleb Hunter, Division 097 from New Orleans, Louisiana, is the winner of the United Service Organization Award for Best Exemplifying the Spirit and Intent of the Word Shipping. Seaman Apprentice Hunter is given a commemorative plaque for the United Service Organization. Well done, Sam. Thank you, Admiral. 
Morning, Admiral. Thank you, Admiral. Good morning, sir. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Force Master Chief. Thank you, Force Master Chief. Good morning, Captain. Seaman Lou, your buddy. Seaman, Twin Call Blue, Dimension 094, Corona, California, is the recipient of the Navy Club of the United States of America Military Excellence Award for best exemplifying the qualities of enthusiasm, devotion to duty, military merit, and teamwork. This award places him at the pinnacle of today's newest sailors. He is awarded a flat out of commendation. Seaman Lou, the staff of recruit training command, salutes you as the finest of this group of graduates. Well Navy, and that isn't worth anything. 
So thanks for whatever that introduction was. All right, I'm honored to join you this morning at this monumental ceremony recognizing your transition from civilian to U.S. Navy sailor. In this crowd are loved ones, family members, and friends witnessing the final phase of this transition, and I want to welcome you all. Five of my children are in the Naval Service, and I do understand your parents' and loved ones' feelings of pride, joy, and even the nervousness of watching someone you love enter into a little bit of the unknown. I've learned over 33 years of service that everyone in this audience will play a vital role in the success of these graduates in front of you, and you will continue to be pillars of support for this next generation of warriors. These men and women in formation have taken the first steps to become someone better than they ever imagined. Each of you know what I am speaking about. Each veteran, past personal journey of each one, each journey of service to this great nation informs who they are and how they view life and the world around them. And each of you sailors are now another link in that never-ending chain. To the graduates, congrats. I'm going to read a quote from one of my favorite books, Chesapeake by James Michener. Why I've chosen to share this quote will be clear by the end of my remarks, but I want you to think about what I'm about to say. A ship, like a human being, moves best when it is slightly athwart the wind, when it has to keep its sails tight and attend to its course. Ships like men do poorly when the wind is directly behind them, pushing them sloppily on their way so that no care is required in steering or management of sails. The wind seems favorable, for it blows in the direction everyone is heading, but actually it's destructive because it induces a relaxation in tension and skill. What is needed is it went slightly opposed to the ship, for then tension can be maintained, juices can flow, ideas can germinate, for ships, like men, respond to challenge. So who am I? You heard about it. I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a naval officer in that order. I've served 33 years as a fighter pilot. My wife and I met at the Naval Academy. She was a ship driver. I chose wisely. I went aviation. I'm from Detroit. She's from New Jersey. I have eight kids, but five in the Navy, one Romeo pilot, one P-8 NFO, a Navy nurse, a nuclear submariner, and one slightly misguided but soon to be Marine aviator. <laughs> and one in school for civil engineering and architecture and two young ladies still trying to figure out what their future holds. I currently serve as the admiral in charge of all of education and training. Because of that, I will continue to be in your chain of command as you transfer out of here. And your next adventure will be a school in one of my schoolhouses. You'll be continued to be touched by that city, my command throughout the rest of your careers. So being in charge of naval education and training is a big job. My command is the largest shore command in the Navy. 29,000 workforce, 40,000 sailors, officers, and chiefs any day. That's over 70,000 total personnel. And I mention that number so that everyone in front of me knows that you, each one of you, are the most important part of my command. You are the future of our nation. Why are you the most important thing in this vast domain? Because you are all standing on the thwart of the wind. It's an old Norse word from the 1400s, and they were great sailors. A thwart. I apologize to the parents and friends, because as you talk to your new sailors, they're going to start saying weird words like a thwart, and you're going to have no idea what they mean. But the big point about being a thwart from the wind is you've made a choice to participate and serve a higher calling, to do a bit more, work a little harder than others, and quite frankly, learn more about yourself every day. And one thing each of you had to have learned is you are now more capable than you thought before you started boot camp. You've learned new languages. 
New terms, belay my last, buy your leave, chain of command, and Cherico, your boss's boss. You'll learn about Navy culture, and maybe even about some of our heroes, like Farragut, Admiral Raymond Spruance, my own hero, Nimitz, Halsey, Doris Miller, Michael Murphy. You are another link in that chain. But what you've really learned is to hold strong and steady against distractions, against the thought of, it's too hard. You've handled the fear of the unknown, against the drive to do what everyone else is doing. And that's remarkable. You're learning to display competence every day and to care every day. Sometimes displaying those traits is a little countercultural, but not for you. Caring competence defined the foundation of our culture, and that's why you are the most important thing to me. You've chosen to stand out, stand up. You've chosen to be a positive example for your peers, your community, and your family and loved ones. For this, I am grateful and proud. Because if you remember the quote from a few moments ago, you've also responded to that challenge. Standing athwart the winds, keeping your sails taut and your life in trim, while keeping a weather eye on the horizon. The horizon of your goals and the future you. This is what makes you remarkable. Our nation is in good hands with you at the helm, as long as you keep learning and keep improving every day. Thank you to everyone for listening to these words for a few moments. Let's get on to the rest of the ceremony. I look forward to serving with you in the fleet. God bless you all. Thank you.
flags. Post. Section leaders, fall out and retrieve outer garments.